48, 49, 50. You know, there was a day when I could bang out 100 push-ups really easy. But I'm getting older now and doing 50 push-ups uh, is a bit challenging. I just don't have the strength and the endurance that I used to. Well, batteries are the same way. As they get older, they lose their punch. Today I'm going to cover how to replace a motorhome chassis battery and how to keep it charged when you're not using it. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. You guys know how anal I am about taking care of our RV. And that includes the batteries. I watch and maintain these things like a hawk. But how they are charged, how they are exercised, summer heat and winter cold have a big effect on how long batteries will last and keep their state of charge. But even in the best care, Batteries are going to get old and they're going to lose their punch. But as a PM item, I replace my chassis battery every three years. I do the same thing to the car. My chassis battery not only just starts the motorhome, but it's also responsible for deploying and retracting the slides, my leveling jacks, and operating my power steps. We're full timers, so having reliable batteries, and in this case, a chassis battery, is really important to me. Now, I don't concern myself with trying to squeeze out every little bit of life out of a battery. I mean, why? Chassis batteries are not that expensive. But for me, it's just a smart thing to do to change it out every three years or so and just not even have to worry about it. In my total lifetime of all of the vehicles that I've ever owned, and RVs, I've never been stranded with a dead battery. And I don't intend to change course now. So let's take a look at what I currently have installed. So here is my battery bay. Uh, these are my house batteries. A lot of you guys have seen this before. These are two Trojan 105 6 volt golf cart batteries wired in series and I also have these batteries uh, with an automatic watering system so all I do is put my plunger on the end of this put the other end in uh, distilled water and I can squeeze that bulb and fill these up in a matter of just a minute or two but we're not covering these today we're covering this battery right here this is the chassis battery this is a Walmart Everstart uh, 65. They call it a Max 65. I, I bought this a uh, little over three years ago for 99 bucks, and it, it's worked great. Uh, but again, um, it's starting to get tired. Uh, so we're going to change this battery out today. And over here uh, is my ample start, and you can see how it's wired in here, and I'm going to go over that a little bit later. Just a little background here so you guys will have some context. The procedure for our motorhome to deploy the slides or retract them is the engine has to be running. So the first thing you have to do is start the engine. That way the alternator immediately starts shoving about 14.2 volts uh, to the chassis battery. Now once that's happening, now I can retract or deploy the slides. Now, I know some of you will be able to relate to this. Uh, as you uh, pull in and deploy the slides over hundreds and hundreds of times, you kind of get used to the sound that it makes and the speed that uh, they come in or go out, right? It, it, your slides have a personality, and you just get used to what that looks and sounds like. Well, during the past three or four months, I've noticed my uh, bigger slide uh, actually uh, hesitating a little bit and it's, it's moving a little bit slower and that was a clear sign to me 
uh, that this chassis battery, once again, is getting older and it's not got quite the punch that it used to have. Now, I've already checked it with my uh, multimeter under load and it, it, you know, it appears to be fine. It continues to have a high state of charge, even under load. But again, it just doesn't have what it has had the last couple, you know, two and a half years or whatever. So I know that I need to change that battery. That's just what I do. I want those electric slide motors to be getting the full juice that they need to have to operate that uh, the way it's supposed to. I don't want it to be straining on partial power. Now, that's not good for the motors either. So today I'm going to martinize my battery bay and change out this chassis battery. I've decided to go with a different type of chassis battery this time. I'm going with the Duracell 65. This Duracell 65 has the exact same footprint as the Walmart uh, 65 does. And it's also a lead acid battery. It's sealed, so there's no maintenance to this, just like the Walmart one. But it has a little more power. So the Duracell 65 is a great battery. I'm a Sam's member and they had these for 129 bucks. They come with a three year guarantee. No questions asked if something goes wrong. And uh, they did charge me an extra $40 for a core charge because I didn't bring my old one in yet. But as soon as I install this today, I'll be taking the Walmart 65 back to Sam's and they'll refund me my $40 core charge. So let's get ready to change the old chassis battery. When I brought the new Duracell battery back to the motorhome, I checked it. It was showing 85% charge at 12.5 volts. So I put my three amp, 15 amp charger on it for about four hours and brought it up to 100% at 13.7 volts. My charger, that I carry has LED lights on it, so it didn't quite capture the reading on my camera, but just trust me on those numbers. Now, before I disconnect my current ch chassis battery, I want to protect all the information that I already have stored in the motorhome, like in my mobile vision uh, monitor unit in the dash. I want to protect all of my radio settings and all of that type of stuff, and all of the information in the ECM, the engine control module. So to do that, I plug my 12 volt memory saver into the OBD2 port right up underneath the dash. This is replacing my chassis battery for all of my electronic information, okay? So I will plug this in and this 12 volt battery here will supply power to all those that information, the ECM and the other things I mentioned, then when I disconnect the battery, the chassis battery, those items will not even know uh, that anything changed and that information will be protected. I've had this particular memory saver for years. This one actually is not available anymore, but I've got a much better one uh, in my Amazon store. They're a great thing to have. If I did not use this memory saver and I just went ahead and un uh, bolted the uh, battery cables off the chassis battery and yanked the old thing out of there, I'm going to lose all that information, everything that's stored in the ECM, and it's going to take me several hundred miles of driving uh, for the ECM to uh, relearn the chassis uh, driving habits. I don't want to do that. I just want to avoid all that. I love the way the coach runs. I want to keep everything the way it is, okay? So that's why I use this. You see the configuration of this right there. This is the OBD2 plug. So on your motorhome, if you look where your steering wheel is, if you look right up underneath the dash there, you'll see the OBD port. It's already plugged in there, okay? You're gonna unplug that from the chassis and plug this in. It's just that simple. I, can, I charge this as a maintenance item. I keep it right here in my front bay and I charge it with an extension cord about once every uh, couple of months or so. And, you, and it has an indicator light that shows you how, how much power it's got and blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna go plug this in. 
Anytime you're working on the battery bay, you always want to be wearing eye protection, no rings, watches, or any other jewelry. Now, those of you who like to wear other facial ornamental jewelry, I mean, I totally support uh, bodily disfigurement, but just make sure that you take the proper preca uh, precautions to protect yourself, okay? Common sense. Next, I wear rubber gloves. Right to the left of my battery bay and to the left of the door, I have my chassis battery on off switch and my house battery on off switch. Both of those are going off. Just a quick note on that uh, chassis battery switch. Anytime Joni and I arrive at a destination and we're there, we're parked, we're spending the night, or we're gonna be there for two or three weeks, it doesn't matter. Once we've arrived and, uh, and everything is all set up, we turn off our chassis battery switch. So that switch is always off when we're parked or in your case, uh, when you are in storage. There's just no point in having that um, turned on. Uh, and in some cases, uh, you just might want to disconnect that uh, uh, chassis battery. I'm not going to get into that right now because there's just too many different variables there. But we always leave that switch off. Next, I turn off my absorption refrigerator. Unplug from shore power and the generator is not running. Next, I'm going to disconnect both the positive and the negative cable off of the chassis battery, the old one. Now, let me ask you a question. Does it matter which cable I remove first? Do you remember? I've shown and covered this before. So come on, say it out loud right where you're sitting. Which cable do I pull off first? The red positive cable or the negative black cable? Or does it matter? The red positive cable, right? No, 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 no. The black negative cable off of the battery comes off first and it goes back on the battery last. Okay? Make sure you remember that. I know a lot of you got this committed to memory, but a lot of you don't. So the negative cable on the battery comes off first and goes back on last. Okay, so let's go do that right now. While I'm removing these cables, I just want to thank everyone again for using my Amazon store for everything you need, whether it's RV related or not. So many of you have bookmarked my Amazon store in your browser or follow me on Amazon. And every time you need anything from Amazon or in my store, you go to my store first, shop for what you need, put it in the cart, and check out. If you're new to my YouTube channel, the link to my Amazon store is down there. In the description text, using my Amazon store is a great way to say thank you, Martin. Thank you for taking the time to making these uh, videos and helping the RV community. So thank you all so much. It means more than you know. So here's the first cable, the negative cable. I used to have a little aluminum uh, brush. It was a two, you just kind of pull it out and it was cone shaped. And you just put it in here and clean the inside of this connector right here. But I can't find it. I've lost it. <laughs> so I'm going to take my little wire brush here. This is my brass bristle brush. I use this thing for a sundry of different things, but I'm just going to clean inside there so that when it goes over the post on the new battery, we'll have a nice new clean connection. So this is a good thing to do. This is just what I do. I take a towel, one of my shop towels, and I just cover it up and I put a rubber band around it. And that just keeps it out of the way and protects it from touching anything. You can use tape, you can use all anything. I just happen to like I got these rags all over the place. That's how I do that. And I cover each one of the, the positive and the negative. So now I'm going to take the positive cable off. Okay, well, I got both cables off. I got my negative over here, my positive over here, and the bracket, the holding bracket that holds the um, chassis battery in place. This is all disconnected and push all that stuff out of the way. And now we're going to pull this battery 
uh, out of the bay here. Uh, these things are heavy, weighs about 50 pounds. So here we go. I have some uh, old yoga mat material. I've kept, a, I had a roll of it that I used for a lot of different things, but I went ahead and cut two pieces here that now I'll put in the bottom uh, underneath this new Duracell battery. And I've done, I've used the same material. If you look down right here, I have it underneath my house batteries and I also have it between my house batteries. And I mean, the reason that I put that in there is it's spongy and it kind of helps as a, like a shock absorber. You know me, I'm always over the top, right? So I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, this material down in here and then I'm gonna put in the new battery. Okay, we got the new battery in and I've already put on the uh, holding bracket here on the top. Something that I like to do is I'm going to take just a little bit of dielectric grease here and put it on these posts. This doesn't really help uh, conduct the, the electricity or anything, but it helps on corrosion and keeps moisture out and all that nonsense. So that's just a thing that I do on practically everything uh, that I do with um, electric. And now I'm going to put the positive cable on. So I got the positive cable on, and now I'm going to take the wire, the red center red wire from the ample start and attach it. Okay, next I'm going to attach the uh, negative cable and the green wire from the ample start over to here. Okay, got the negative cable on, and you can see the ample start, the yellow light is on, and it is now charging from the house batteries. So the last thing I'm going to do down in here is take a little bit of my uh, battery terminal protector and I'm going to give each one of those a shot there and a shot there and we're done here. So now the next thing I'm going to do is go unplug my memory saver, remember, and plug the OBD2 cable back together. Don't need that anymore. So you can see right here on my digital readout, it's showing 14.4 volts being charged to the house batteries. But let's check the, the chassis battery. So we have our multimeter turned to 12 volt. Take the red probe and put it on the red post of the chassis battery. The black on the negative. And look at there, 14.44 volts being charged from the alternator with the engine running. So everything checks out good. I'm going to turn off the engine and turn off my chassis switch. And now I can plug back in and turn the fridge on. Okay, well, that wasn't that bad, was it? I want to go into a little more detail of the Apple Start and what it does. This little device I chose to mount here in my battery bay on this side panel. Now this unit can divert up to 15 amps from the house batteries to keep the chassis battery topped off, but usually it's a lot less than that. Now this unit is Revision F2. It's the latest one, uh, which also has a user selectable high temp mode that reduces the turn on, turn off voltage of 12.7 and 12.5 volts respectively. This selectable mode is on the back of the unit and it's very easy to change that to either mode. I have chosen just to keep it in the default mode. So as the chassis battery sits dormant, for a while, for whatever reason, you've been parked, you're in storage, uh, whatever, it can lose some of its charge. So the Apple Start, it's reading, constantly monitoring the condition of the chassis battery, and if it's seeing that it's dropping in state of charge, it'll begin to draw a little power from the house batteries and keep it fully charged. It's very easy to install. You can see that it has three simple wires. You have this bottom green wire that I showed you earlier 
that comes around here and goes to the negative post on the chassis battery. Then you have the center red wire and it goes directly down to the positive post on the chassis battery. Then you have the top wire. It goes all the way around here and goes to the positive post on the house batteries. So as the ample start begins to see that the chassis battery is getting low, it starts pulling power from the house batteries through this wire and sending it over and distributing it through the chassis battery. You can see here it has five different little functions and right now you can see that green light blinking and that's the maintenance mode. It, it, it sees that the chassis battery is fully charged and it's in maintenance mode. It's just blinking and monitoring the battery. Once it senses that it needs uh, power, the second light will come on, which is yellow, and that is the charging mode. It'll just gradually keep putting power into the chassis battery. Now the makers of Ample Start do not sell this unit on Amazon, so I don't have this in my Amazon store. But I do have his little brother, the Trickle Start, which does the exact same thing, except it doesn't have those different voltages that turn on and turn off option like the Ample Start does. But you know, it, you really don't need that anyway. And it's cheaper. It also has a solar option if you want to hook it up to a small solar panel and keep your chassis battery topped off that way. So the trickle start is another great option and it's in my Amazon store in the everything electrical category. Now if you want to know more about how to take care of your motorhome, your trailer, your fifth wheel, your toy hauler, you know, how to take care of it, how to do upgrades, just click my logo right under this video and that will take you to my YouTube homepage. On my homepage, you'll see the playlist tab. Click that and every video I've ever done will be right there on that page in different categories. Or as another option, you see that magnifying glass in the upper right hand corner? Click inside there and type what you're looking for. If I've done a video on that subject, it will list it. Now I know some of you out there think, Martin, uh, changing out that chassis battery every three years, uh, uh, you know, that's a little aggressive and really not necessary. Uh, you know what? I mean, uh, I get that. That's cool with me. We all have to make our own decisions. I just don't see the point in pushing uh, and trying to squeeze out the full life of a battery, running the risk of getting stranded, and uh, not pouring the juice to my uh, jacks and my uh, slides and all that. I, I want them to have the full power. I want them to have the power. I like that guy on Star Trek. They need power. And I want to give it to them. It's just how I'm wired. But when you get ready to change out your chassis battery, I hope this video uh, will be helpful. That's it for now. So until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around.